Hello everyone in this video, let us take a look at uh, Emacs Web Browser. So today I wanted to talk about uh, Emacs Web Browser. It's a bit strange spelling and let me show you what I mean. So if you search on Google e -W -W Emacs, you will be presented with this uh, page where you can learn about uh, EWW which is Emacs Web Browser and it is basically a, a way to open websites within your Emacs and in the previous video I talked about using uh, using terminal based application to open a website and we opened uh, two sites the first one, is, first one is Ravi.pro, which is of course my blog. It is a simple blog built using built using org mode and maintained using org mode. I also write blog on this site, so you can take a look at these blogs. And I also opened uh, using the application terminal based application this Drupal site, which is uh, much complicated. Uh, it has a lot of uh, things as compared to the simple HTML based uh, site here. So the other site that we opened was ravisaga.in. So let us try both the sites and uh, open them using uh, Emacs. So if you are within your Emacs, let me just uh, get rid of my face so you have more space to look at uh, what I'm doing right now. So when you are in Emacs, if you press meta, X uh, followed by E W W and if you enter you can then type in your uh, URL so my URL is uh, the first one ravi.pro and if I press enter the whole site will open within my Emacs and this is really really great because uh, personally I prefer uh, Emacs for doing a lot of things. I use Emacs for mostly org mode, but at the same time, I also use Emacs for uh, doing my, my, my basic editing whenever I'm um, doing any work. If I have to, let us say, edit a file, even on a server, I would use uh, Emacs. So talking about what you can do here, so basically you can do almost everything that you can do with Emacs, but of course this buffer is read only. So don't expect <laughs> any changes that you can do here because it is nothing but uh, a read only buffer. But the good thing is that you can uh, of course navigate if you press tab, uh, you know, you can click on let us say blog and it will uh, uh, of course open the blog page. You can use your standard commands or keyboard bindings to select a text and maybe if you want to copy you can also copy it if you want so uh, you can copy it and then you can of course paste it somewhere if you want to go back you can press L or if you want to uh, go again back uh, I mean you can use L and R let us say if I open uh, this blog and if I go to back up your YouTube uh, videos it, it is a blog that I wrote so you can go to you can press L to go back and uh, this is really nice because uh, it will uh, uh, give you this uh, ability to navigate and if you want to open maybe one more uh, url in a separate buffer so what you can do you can press eww and uh, if you look for uh, some uh, other commands that you can also um, so some other things that you can do here so you can see here that we have something called as open in a new buffer and uh, you can uh, you have now a new buffer which is of course copying the same url but you can then uh, just uh, open the site a different site here maybe you want to open uh, ravi sagar dot in so this is of course my drupal website and uh, in my previous video i talked about uh, how this Drupal site, uh, I mean, I, I basically wanted to talk talk, talk to you about uh, uh, when you make a site using any technology, it could be a simple HTML based site or it could be built in Drupal. 
uh, make sure you are following some accessibility guidelines because uh, it will be then easier for everyone to basically navigate or use your site. So the good thing about Drupal is that it has a lot of these capabilities in build. Uh, you, I mean, of course, you need to test it properly and uh, you have to take care of certain things like uh, maybe if you're using some images, uh, you have to use the alt text. And when you organize your site, you have to, I mean, try to have some structure like, uh, for, I mean, you should have some top level headers followed by h2 and h3 and so on uh, and of course if you take a look at the site here it has of course images and it has this main navigation on top but if i open the same site here uh it has the same main menu the, the navigation but you can also take a look at all these all these blog posts so the good thing about uh, using emacs is that it actually works uh, really nice and uh, uh and of course personally if uh, you prefer working on emacs then i think it is a really good option uh one thing which i wanted to show you if you come if you remember from my previous video when i talked about uh, opening let us say a blog post uh or maybe uh, a big file with code or maybe some formatting emacs takes care of a lot of these things for you so for example if i open uh, let us say this particular file maybe blogging with emacs uh, so you can see here that if I go back to the to the site and if I open the same block, it has this table of content and then it has, of course, uh, some code blocks, some code snippets. Now, if I take a look at the same file here, uh, you can see that it looks quite good already. There is a structure here and if I, of course, click on, uh, let us say, one of these uh, table uh, you know, t table of content links, it will take me to the actual uh, place on the document on the page. And, uh, and the good thing about Emacs is that it actually preserved the, the formatting, or rather, I should say the syntax highlighting. So because I, I have some, uh, uh, some, some code within my, within my uh, page here. So for example, if I show you this particular piece of code, I have this uh, Emacs uh, lips, Lisp code and this is basically for demonstrating how to configure your uh, Emacs uh, for publishing. And uh, this is actually preserving the color schemes and rather, I mean, it has uh, provided some uh, syntax. This is really interesting because uh, uh, when I am uh, looking at this particular page, it makes it slightly easier to basically uh, to, to basically consume the the content, and this is something that I thought I'll probably discuss in this video because uh, I personally love working on Emacs and I use Org mode a lot. And uh, this new capability that I just came to know about, I have been using Emacs for a long time, but I never really bothered to uh, open a website using uh, Emacs. So uh, this is all I wanted to share in this video. I hope you learned something new today and you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much.